Consider the function f of x and determine the general antiderivative. The general antiderivative is big F of x plus c, where c is any constant, and the derivative of big F of x is equal to the given function f of x, which means we need to determine the indefinite integral of the given function. However, we do need to rewrite some of the terms in the given function in order to apply the appropriate integration formula. We have the integral of 5x cubed minus 2 divided by x. And then we have plus 3 divided by x to the fifth, which we'll need to write using a negative exponent. 3 divided by x to the fifth is equivalent to 3 times x to the power of negative 5. And then for the terms involving a radical, we'll need to write the radicals using rational exponents. So for 3 times the square root of x, to write the radical as a rational exponent, remember the fractional exponent has a numerator equal to the exponent on the radicand and a denominator equal to the index. And therefore, 3 times the square root of x is equivalent to 3 times x to the power of 1 half. Now we have minus 1 half times the cube root of x squared, which is equivalent to minus 1 half times x to the power of 2 thirds. And now to find the antiderivative, we integrate each term and we'll add a plus c at the very end. So the integral of 5x to the third is equal to 5 times x to the fourth divided by 4 minus the integral of 2 divided by x. Since the integral of 1 divided by x is equal to natural log absolute divided by x plus c, the integral of 2 divided by x is equal to 2 natural log absolute divided by of x. And then we have plus the integral of 3 times x to the power of negative 5, which is equal to 3 times x to the power of negative 5 plus 1 is negative 4 divided by negative 4. And then we have plus the integral of 3 times x to the power of 1 half, which is 3 times x to the power of 1 half plus 1 is 3 halves divided by 3 halves. And then we have minus the integral of 1 half x to the power of 2 thirds, which is 1 half times x to the power of 2 thirds plus 1 is 2 thirds plus 3 thirds or 5 thirds. So we have x to the power of 5 thirds divided by 5 thirds plus c. And now let's begin to simplify. For the first term we have 5 fourths x to the fourth. And then we have minus 2 natural log absolute value of x. Because we have a negative 4 in the denominator here, we have plus a negative or just minus 3 fourths x to the power of negative 4. Dividing by 3 halves is equivalent to multiplying by 2 thirds, which gives us plus 3 times 2 thirds times x to the power of 3 halves minus 1 half. Dividing by 5 thirds is equivalent to multiplying by 3 fifths. So we have 1 half times 3 fifths times x to the power of 5 thirds plus c. Still simplifying, we have 5 fourths x to the fourth minus 2 natural log absolute value of x minus, let's rewrite 3 fourths x to the power of negative 4 using a positive exponent. So we'll move the x to the power of negative 4 down to the denominator, making the exponent positive, which gives us 3 divided by 4 x to the fourth plus, here 3 divided by 3 simplifies to 1, giving us just plus 2 x to the power of 3 halves minus, nothing simplifies here, we have 1 half times 3 fifths, which is 3 tenths x to the power of 5 thirds, and of course plus c. So now we know our general antiderivative, big F of x is equal to 5 fourths x to the fourth minus 2 natural log absolute value of x minus 3 divided by 4 x to the fourth plus 2 x to the power of 3 halves minus 3 tenths x to the power of 5 thirds plus c. Which means if we found the derivative of this function, we would get the original function f of x. And you may want to take a moment and verify that that is true. Thank you for watching.